Okay, cool. I'm so I'm here. Uh, I'm gonna hit uh, record right now, man. So let me start this all by saying, first of all, thank you, man, for uh, you know stepping into this room with me. Uh, this is my little C stand up experiment uh, with comics that's heavy hitting across the country. Right. A lot of them known, a lot of them, uh, you know, on the rising, uh, you know, on the way rising, you know what I'm saying? So first of all, it's good to, uh, you know, lay eyes on you, Newt, you know? We, no uh, we we need to figure out a way how to parlay this thing into a constant check, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, uh, um, maybe we should figure out how to do like province, uh, or or uh, nationals every year, set up our right. thing around there. You know, I mean, I talked directly to the Grand po Pole Mark, and he absolutely was down for that, man. So absolutely, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't send him a send him the documentation to try to st get the money out of his pocket, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, yeah. verbally he was down for it. I mean, yeah, like comedy nights would be good, you know, especially if you just supporting your own. You know, they got enough talent within the frat to be wow. able to do a, a clear rotation of, of comedians in at least each province or grad chapter or something can do something every month. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know, yeah. somewhere, man. So so that's it. So, yeah, welcome to this, man. This is the incredible Jay Bliss, East Coast <laughs> Phenomenon. You know what I mean? I've, I've been watching you on the Internet, killing the uh, comedy zones all across the country. It's been a long time since I got a booking from the Comedy Zone, but uh, they got a <laughs> franchise, you know what I mean? They they know yeah. what they're doing when it comes to uh, keeping comics in their stable working. So, man, um, that's that's a beautiful thing that you're doing, bro. Um, yeah, I think, part, I think part of that is the fact that I live here. I live in Charlotte, so they yeah. headquarters in Charlotte. So, you know, yeah. out of sight, out of mind sometimes with, with comedians and, you know, they get emails from you know, hundreds of comedians on a regular basis. Oh, thousands. Try to go through the, yeah, go through the sift through. I think a lot of times people don't recognize that if you if you live in an area where they have, where they have a need, then they probably gonna call you. Oh, if for sure. Yeah. If it's a situation sure. where somebody got to travel far, you 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 out of mind because they're like, well, he got to go all the way from Michigan, and our show is in Virginia, and it's like, yeah, yeah, you know I mean, so they're not even thinking that way. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know what I, me and Joel and uh, this other cat got into some, you know, some conf some uh, conversations that didn't go, uh, you know, it was race based. And, you know, I, sometimes black, black folks think, you know, different levels and different things. I ain't trying to be, you know, this this is public. This is going to go out public. So we don't need to, you know, go through a lot of conversations. Uh, I still get the emails, you know, when they offer shows. Um, uh, from Joel, the other cat was Summit Comedy, and me and him just had it straightforward because, uh, you know, man, I called the dude a racist, you know what I'm saying, and he didn't like it, so he took yeah. me off his email. Joel was on a different thing. He wasn't straightforward like black folks need to stay in their place like dude was, but he definitely, you know, um, I'm not on all the emails. Let's put it like that. You know what I'm saying? I all, right. Well, all right, well, let's let's we don't want to put that out public. Let's no. stop the recording. Let's start that joint over, and we'll have a conversation offline about that. <laughs> all right, all right, we got. It. And I'm still gonna take a look, make sure we ain't, we edit it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so hey, thank you again for coming in to you know do this interview with C Stand Up, man. This is my my um you know my my little room. I'm I'm branching out and and building my uh YouTube channel up with you know incredible comics that either people don't know, need to know, or already know. You know what I mean? And on the East Coast, you got a, uh, for sure, you got a real solid name. I didn't see a lot of different people, uh, you know, posting about what you do. I've watched you um, do what you do. And uh, you, you, like I said, you with the Comedy Zone, which is the right place to, you know, which is one of the right things to do on the level, you know, where we at. Um, I believe once you get into the, the improv solidly they see what you're doing man you you'll be there right? so my my uh angle with this one is is man give the people a little brief on uh who you are man like where you come from you know stuff like that 
Oh, man, like, I'm originally from South Jersey, uh, Camden, New Jersey. Okay. Uh, went to high school in uh, Willingboro, New Jersey. Um, graduated, uh, went to college in Charlotte, down to Johnson C. Smith University. Shout out to the HBCUs. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, I started comedy in 2005. Um, so, wow. you know, it was like one of those things where um, you was all like, I was always naturally funny, but yeah. it was like people always telling me in your ear, like, man, you funny, but nobody ever really said you should do stand up. That was just something in the back of my head, you know what I mean? Right. But um, I, I just never had a fear of getting on stage or getting in front of people. So it was a natural progression. And once I got on stage, it was just like a snowball effect. Like it was just like, all right, this is, this is how it's done. This is what you need to do. Um, you need to continue to write. And then my pen was, I already knew going in, cause I wasn't a young cat coming in. Like I was older, I had life experiences. Yeah. I knew what I didn't want to do on stage. And I knew how I wanted to represent myself. Like I, I'm, I'm not for the clownish behavior. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not a physical comic. I'm not knocking anybody that's a physical comic. I yeah. don't do a lot of moving around and jumping around and, and, and dancing and stuff like that. Like, I don't do a whole bunch of that. Like my, my whole thing is, I got something to say and you either gonna hear it or yeah. you're not, you know what I mean? So um, I, that's, that's just my style. That's just how I do things. And if you're paying attention, uh, you'll be rewarded for what you what you listening to. You know what I mean? So that's, that's how I always told my joke. Man, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. And being mature and everything, and you look, you know, a lot, a lot younger than you are, because you you are like 72, right? Well, but, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just messing with come you, on, man. Hey, Lighten up, bro. We, <laughs> <laughs> we having a good time. You know, one of my favorite colleges was uh, your college. I, I don't know. I can't remember when I did it. I did it... Um, it had to be around 2007, 2006, something like that. Yeah, because I came up there. I forget. I forgot who I was uh, doing it with, but um, it was a, it was a lot of fun, man. I know there's a lot of slave plantations around your school, man. It was like the, nah. you know, the actual <laughs> buildings and stuff. They had that porch that Master Go look out over and shit. I was like, wow, this is you got the wrong house. school, man. Like Charlotte. <laughs> country bro chill out man <laughs> <laughs> that's cool so yeah. so listen here man tell me um some of the projects you were working on prior to covid kicking in you know man um a lot like um i had uh i did my my television debut um back in november of yeah. last year uh, i was on stand up nashville which aired in january okay uh, and then i was able to get that out and then people were able to see that. And then I taped my dry bar comedy special oh. in, in January as well. And okay. it's supposed to come out third quarter this year. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I just had gigs. I had gigs that was booked. You know what I mean? I had just finished doing a, a private gig for the uh, American Cancer Society okay. and, and had a great show. It was like 200 some people in there, man. It was jam packed. Yeah. I was close to the show out, man. It was, it was dope. And I just couldn't, I couldn't believe like, I got two phone calls um, on on consecutive days. Each phone call only lasted two minutes, and after each phone call, uh, I was I was out four thousand dollars. Ouch! Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah, this COVID is affecting a lot of brothers. Man. Right. You know, yeah. it, it didn't drop people's schedules ugly. So. That's right. it. So, you know, that being said, man, do you have any current hustles or current things that you're doing to maintain? Because, you know, like brothers now are doing a lot of interesting things. Like myself, personally, I got an, uh, I got an arrangement with this company called Photify. So I create digital um, um, graphics for their memes. So you might have like, see these letters behind me. I'll create the letters. It'll have a saying and then you purchase the app. And you get, you know, you just put that on your picture instead of you typing it out. It might be slick or whatever. So that's right. one thing. Dudes are, you know, doing classes online. You know what I mean? Things like that. Right. So what what else, what you got happening, man? Or, or you know, talk to me and maybe we can, I can push you towards something if you don't. Want to. I, well, I've just been selling my merchandise. That's how, that's pretty much yeah. what I've been doing. Like, we've been supporting me and selling merchandise, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, things like that. And, um you know, there's a lot of different things that I figured out. Um, like this, for instance, this this medium that we're using, 
Otherwise, yeah. I probably wouldn't have known that I could probably snatch audio from this and then put it on my podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I already have a podcast that I do, Bliss is Ignorant uh, podcast. You know, you can find <laughs> iTunes, Spotify, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, but um, now I can go across the country and, and connect with any comedian that I know and say, yo, man, you get on my podcast. They're like, yeah, because usually it's when I'm on the road and I'm working with somebody, they're like, yo, let's shoot this podcast real quick. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, now it's like, you know, it's even easier. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, it's good to find some things out, you know what I'm saying? So you have to be as difficult. But, you know, missing that stage, man, it's it's uh, it's, it's bad for some, some, for some cats. You know what I mean? Some cats got demons. And they... Um, them not getting on stage sometimes it's like it's real hard to keep them demons out. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm praying for a lot of the brothers that uh, brothers and sisters that we know within the comedy game, and we know a lot of them that's dealing with these demons. And you know, we know that them being on the road is what's keeping them um, living, keeping them free uh, and you know, sane. Successful. Yeah. Hello. Right. Like I said, man, it's a lot of brothers and sisters out there that's like. They on the edge, and we. I'm like, man, I hope this is over soon. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, man. I've I really haven't even touched on that part of the um, that part of our uh, profession. You know, like um, a lot of people don't realize how therapeutic it is for a person who gets on stage. I, in fact, I actually um, compare being a comedian, especially getting that first standing or that first you know burst of people hot laughing hard at your joke to being a heroin addict you know and like the first time you really get on stage it's almost like you put that needle in your arm you draw it back and that laughter gets in your system man and you almost can never get off of that you know just right. like heroin addict you got to go day by day i know right. people who um you know started out with me back in the day and they you know, they had to stop because they got family issues. They didn't have the bread to keep going, you know, or some cats went to jail, you know, whatever happened to take them off this wheel, they still think about it. And then when they see somebody that's, that they used to mess with jump on TV or on the radio or doing something special, it, it hits them almost like, you know, something, you know, that we, we can't really voice correctly because I've never been a heroin addict. So, you know, I, I get it. And then with that, you're dealing with why you're involved with it. Man. So right. that's a, an interesting point that you brought up. And I'm going I'm to have to uh, investigate that a little bit more with some of the other cats that I'm talking to, man. So why don't you give me an example of that? Like, you know, it's like um, some, some people, they have maybe a toxic situation at home. Uh, maybe sometimes they're... Um, them being on the road keeps them away from that situation. Yeah. Um, you might have a situation where somebody's dealing with um, drugs or some type of addiction and being on the road is keeping their mind occupied from having to do that. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. There's a lot of things, man, where you sitting in your house, being alone by yourself mm. might just be like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead. You know what I mean? And it's like, that whole thing, like me, somebody being busy, a lot of times is like keeping them from going the, the, the left, going left. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So yeah. you got to You got to think about, it, man. Um, you know, and then, like I say, some of them stories going to pop up and you're mm -hmm. like, man, what happened to so-and-so? Like, man, you know what I mean? So you got to you got to you got to look at it from all different aspects. I mean, I work with a lot of comedians, man. Sometimes they're like you can't drink in, a, in the um, in the green room. You know what I mean? Or you can't, you know, you can't, you can't smoke weed, or you can't bring up weed or talk about, you know, stuff like that. And it's like this piece, is, this person dealing with something. Like you can't, yeah. like, and sometimes you know, if you don't know what's going on, you you don't you won't know otherwise. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, that's very interesting, man. I, yeah. I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't really put that together. So what's so what's give us a little, you know, insight on y'all scene, man. Not many people know what's happening in Charlotte as far as the uh, the every day-to-day -day scene. Because like in Chicago, we have at least three to five actual clubs. And then we have probably another 30 to 40 rooms around the city 
that people bump in and bump out of. Some of them come, some of them go, some of them are replaced, you know, within the Chicago metropolitan area. Do y'all have anything like that in the Charlotte area? Nope, not no. at all. No, really? not at all. I'm gonna tell you, so, you know, where I get my, you know, when I first started, I was able to, you know, make my mark and, and grind in Charlotte. You know what I mean? I had a mainstream room that I could go to and work out material. And I had an urban room that I could go to and work out material. But like I said, I started back in 2005. Right. So it was easy to get to the mainstream room and work out material because I was likable. I wasn't threatening. I wasn't talking about stuff that was going to go over top of the audience's head. But then I can go to the urban room because Hell, I'm from Camden, New Jersey. I don't, yeah. you know, I know how to work with my people too. So right. it's like I, I had the best of both worlds. And I, I got on the road and started, you know, getting better. And the one thing I recognize about Charlotte is, you know, you, you got the mainstream room and you got some urban rooms every now and there, but you don't have four or five clubs. Charlotte is big enough to have two, three clubs, you know yeah. what I mean? But they don't. And the other thing is, in order to get better, you got to get on the road. Yeah, because okay. Charlotte ain't that type of city. If I was in Chicago, yeah, yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can make my mark in Chicago just by going to those different rooms and getting up every night and doing my time. But yeah. living in Charlotte on the road is where I got better. Hmm. So, so you don't know, like you don't you guys don't have. Um, I, I I thought I knew a couple cats from Charlotte or at least from that area that were doing comedy. Um, I can't call their names right now, but yeah, they. I mean, they're doing rooms. I mean, you you can do rooms. You know, what I mean, you can do sets and things like that. But I mean, for me, I never, I never strive to be the funniest person in Charlotte. Okay. I never, I never did. I mean, if somebody came to me and was like, "Yo, who the funniest person in Charlotte?" I let them name everybody else they want to name. I don't care. Yeah. My whole thing is, is, if I come to Charlotte, if I live here and I'm doing a show, and people like, man. I ain't never heard of you. Man, where you come from? I go, yeah, I live here. They're like, no. I go, yeah. I go, yeah, but I'm never here. Yeah. I'm booked, yeah. bro. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? So yeah. I don't, I don't strive. I don't strive. Now, here's the thing. If you're a comedian in Charlotte and you name, like, the top five comedians in Charlotte and you don't say Jay Bliss, then I'm like, where you been at? Like, like, right. <laughs> I'm going right. to ask the question out of my own arrogance because I know what I can do. Right. But, my whole thing is, is what I, what I talk to people about is, you know, I put the time in, I know my jokes and I know how I write. And I know right. I don't sound like, I know I don't, I don't sound like everybody else. I don't. Yeah. So that's where when I, when I look at what I do and what I can do, I just, I just, I sit back and I look and I go, Hey, that's a good dude right there. That dude is funny. Or yeah. that, that right there, man, she funny. She got good stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I'm always listening I always see the new cats. I'm always in their ear and I'm always giving them some advice to be like, look, man, you know, stop asking so many questions when you get on stage or, hey, just get to the funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, you know, don't talk so much. You right. know what I mean? Like, yeah. yo, and you know, things like that. You know what I mean? Move the mic stand, bro. Like, you, 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 you walking around it. Stuff like that. Like, anytime <laughs> you see, you know, a young cat that's doing it. But a lot of times, man, I don't even remember. But what happens is when these younger cats start getting older in the game, they always come back and be like, yo, man, you, you pulled me to the side, man, one time when I first started and told me blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, yeah. I'd be like, that's what's up. But like, yeah. I, I don't have a young cat that can come up to me and be like, man, you was an ass to me. I'd be like, nah, because that ain't me. I, I'm not going to be that because nobody was like that to me. You know what I'm right. saying? Now, yeah. over the years, you know, you get your, you get your, your things when you bump heads with people. Yeah. Um, but I always let everybody know. Look, listen, bro. I ain't no short dude. I'm six two. <laughs> yeah. Do something a lot. You know what I'm <laughs> but, well, hopefully, you know, hopefully it don't never get have to get to that man. But you brought up something. Nah, but that but I, think... I let people know these jokes is jokes. But I also yeah. let people know I'm a grown man first, bro. My whole yeah. thing is I'm gonna come with true respect. Come to me the same way. And if you don't, we ain't never gotta speak again. But yeah. I always, you know, I always let people know. Listen, bro. These jokes is on stage. You know what yeah. I mean? So. You know, yeah. it's always, you know, whatever you can't go through this business without bumping heads with somebody. Yeah, that's 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 a impossibility. 
That's but human you nature. Did, you know, you, you did bring up a very important thing, man, I think. And I think that uh, it's almost a psychology that Black folks is, has been uh, conditioned to do, man, throughout the time, which is we always seem to try to find out who's the best whatever and compare maybe you know like you'll see on facebook nowadays it'll be like prince or michael jackson you know and, and it's and it's really an air an arrogant ignorance that we need to erase in our culture because you don't see yeah. other cultures doing that right um on, on the whole um because there's room for everybody you know and it seems like we so stuck in the who's gonna be that two dudes that came that hollywood accepted that we get caught up in our everyday mindset so when you see a person who's a craftsmith like yourself who's doing the thing on the stage the way they need to do it without even having to go through the first five years of that learning curve that we we know is in our profession um then they should be able to sit back and enjoy you without right. being worried about, are you funny or are you this? Now, I, I've, uh, had the, I've had the blessing of talking to um, this one cat who, who was the opening act for, um, for uh, the Rat Pack. You know, um, Steve Mart, um, Steve. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and Frank Sinatra and all of them. This is an old timer. He been he sat on uh, what you call his Johnny Carson's uh, sofa for over fifty years, and he was all he told me and a small group of other people in Chicago in this Laugh Factory thing. He said, "Man, y'all need to stop trying to say who's not funny because you come from the same nest." And y'all eat together. So if if y'all get y'all stuff together strong, like almost like a Wu Tang situation, all of y'all gonna be eating. But if you keep talking about such and such ain't funny, and you on the same show, you you erasing people that come that want to come to the show. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? And so it was just people wisdom. Don't, people, don't, people don't understand that everybody can eat. You know, um, there's there's 52 weeks in a year, right? Yeah. Exactly. And you can't do you can't do every club every week. You know what I mean? So if you can only do one club one time a year, why are you not giving out names for the rest of the week? Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean, it's like, you know, I know I know when I do shows and somebody's like, Man, that was funny, man. Do you, do you got any other names? Yeah, I got some other names. Let right. me let me let me jot them down. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. And, and um and that and then sometimes, you know, it comes back to you. You know, oh. sometimes, how many times you got in a phone call and be like, yo, man, I need you to hit this promoter up. Um, he doing this show. I gave him your name. And then the next week, you calling him going, hey, I, I found this gig. But, you know, it's, it's funny. It's like out of sight, out of mind, because if somebody doing it for you, you won't think to do it to them for them first. Like, you don't never really have somebody that just jump out and grab your name if if they didn't do the same for you first. You see what I'm saying? It's like yeah, you got yeah. somebody something in order to get it back. And then right. if I do something for you, you want to do something for that person. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a process that I that we can all respect, man. So that's it. So yeah. you know, um, so give me some uh, some of the things that you think you're gonna be doing after this COVID, man. Cause, well, first of all, are you? Let me let me deal with it as it is today, right? So are you in? Are you by yourself in your crib? Yeah. Okay. So how's that going for you, man? How's that going for you? Dude, is is boring as hell. Like, like, well, you know, I mean, I do, I do go see my kids every other day. So I, I, I travel down there. Um, I've become my, my, the caretaker for my mom's. My yeah. Dukes is a little up there in age, and she had aides that came in every day to help her. But I was like, nah, nobody coming up in here until this is over with. So, yeah. you know, I, that's my job right now. You know what I mean? Just right. Take care I've been of there. I've been there. And, uh, and the dude, I mean, honestly, man, I couldn't tell you what the like. Here's the thing. Even if they lifted it today, right? Yeah. We all know that the dates that we got ain't really going to stay the same. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now it's like, all right, am I jumping back out there immediately when they let this thing up? Or am I going to sit back for 30 days to 60 days and be like, let me see who died first? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like you're not just going to jump out there. Here's the thing. Are people going to comedy shows when we, when we first get back? Right. You know, That's comedy is an interesting. That's an intimate place. That's yeah. a lot of cool seats together. Everybody smushed together. I don't know if that's gonna be the venue people just jump out and start doing. You know yeah, what I mean? I so, know. 
you might go back to the comedy and your shows where you used to having 100 to 300 people got 20 people. Yeah, I know. Some people can't if if you lucky, if oh. you lucky. Yeah, some people ego can't deal with that. Some people don't do good shows with a small crowd. Some right. people, people don't care if it's a small crowd or a big crowd. Right. Like they there to do their job. You know what I mean? So it's like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta think. And then like right now, I'm writing. Like yeah. I'm writing. Like, and I'm not writing COVID jokes. Like I'm writing. So when this things flip back on, they yeah. like, yo, this got a whole new half hour. You know what I mean? Like, you know, this is <laughs> like that's what you need to be prepared for. That's why you see me putting so much content out. Cause guess what? I ain't telling these jokes no more. <laughs> right. I, I, you, when you see it, you won't hear it no more. That's yeah. you know what y'all can have that joke. Yeah, I'm yeah. not telling that one no more. I got new stuff lined up, and that's what I'm doing when I come back. Man, you that's awesome, saying? bro. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, and I love it. I look forward to it, man. We're gonna. We, uh, have you been to Chicago yet? No, I not for comedy. Now I met uh, one of the bookers for Zanies uh, when I was in Iowa, right? Yeah, uh, which one, Brian or Bert? No, this was a female. Um, oh, okay. Same time uh, I met Stroop, and I started working at Funny Bones and Improvs after I did Iowa, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I met her. She told me when she wanted to bring me up, told me what I was going to need to do, and then she was like, I'm going to be honest with you, we got a whole bunch of comedians. I'm like, Chicago got a whole lot of comedians. And she said, so honestly, we would probably never bring you to Chicago because we got our own comedian set of comedians that we pull from as far as features. And I was yeah. like, well, I got headliner time. You know what I mean? Like I got yeah. a headline. So then she looked at it like, are you selling tickets? And I'm basically like, here we go with this whole thing, right? Hey, that's the name part of, of the game, bro. But the part of that, the part of that that drives me crazy is the people that you headline, they don't sell tickets either. We all know the game. You know what I mean? Like you're not giving you're gonna. You're not gonna give me the weekend because of this. You're not gonna give me the weekend, right? But you'll give another no-name comedian the weekend because they work with this agency, and this agency is going to book Corey Holcomb. They're gonna book, uh, you know, Tony Rock, and they're gonna book um, Dion Cole. And in order for you to get them three at your club, you gotta book uh, John Q. Okay. So. And then John Q get a weekend, and they be like, man, who the hell is John Q? And they be like, man, John Q sold out. No, John Q, they paid for the room for John Q, and it looked like he sold out. But you could have gave Bliss that same weekend, yeah. and they be like, well, you don't sell tickets. Well, neither do John Q. So don't act like we not, we not the same, because we are. I understand. And nine times out of ten, I got a way better show than John Q. Yeah, yeah. But you claim I don't sell tickets. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> we already know what the game is. We already know. Yeah, well, you know what, man? Um, so. As a guy who has a room that I book, um, it's really about putting butts in the seats, man. I don't know nothing about um, them clubs in y'all city booking those people that ain't booking them. Because we have some clubs that are like C and D clubs that mm -hmm. book dudes who are not draws, and they but they sell their own tickets from the club. It's one called right. the uh, comedy bar, comedy bar right. in Chicago. You should right. hit them up. But the right. but the improv in Schaumburg, they don't fuck around, bro. They putting in, you know, Tommy Davidson. He sells tickets. They putting in um, Corey Holcomb, D. Ray Davis from Chicago. Those cats got such a big following in our city that they could right. really a lot of the times they just do their own shows now. And that's what the that's what the whole protocol is. Is people. Uh, Artists are taking away the power of these corporations that put right. comics in front of people because we're starting to do stuff like this podcast where people start looking at it, they start looking for you, and they're not looking to, uh, they're not worried about where it's at. So there's one dude who I'm not, I know you know his name. I don't know if you ever met him, but Damon Williams is a master at that dude. The dude. At first, we had problems with Zanies. I and maybe five other black cats were the only ones Zanies would put on their stage. Uh, and I could name them out right now. But dudes like uh, Damon Williams, 
they've never booked um uh what's old boy that was uh, uh Bernie Mac. The Zanies never booked Bernie Mac. And and that's one of the things that I like to um put on the table now before they had such a I won't say it was a racist policy, even though it is a racist policy, but they were claiming what you were just talking about right. without looking at the facts. And the facts were that Bernie Mac had this place called the Cotton Club that was packed on Mondays. And you know what I'm saying? You know how hard it is to get people out on a Monday? Bernie Mac had the room shoulder to shoulder on Monday. Then he went to this place called Miltroneers in Chicago that was small, but he still packed it shoulder to shoulder. So them saying he, and Miltroneers was less than five minutes from Zanies in the, uh, right. in the early 90s, late, well, late 80s, middle, middle to late 80s. So it wasn't about them booking the person at that time. But now that the money is more important and the relationship that you just mentioned, those, you know, like Gersh or, you know, CCA want to give you Corey Holcomb at a price. And the price is they need to put in, you know, young, young, young comic jock, you know, whatever this, these, you know, internet dudes are. So, right. so, you know, but we, we we're the artists, man. We starting to have more leverage, bro. You yeah, more leverage. absolutely, absolutely, man. I, I I believe you. You know what I mean. So it's um you know it's it's a it's an interesting business. Um, uh, but you know don't ever think that we don't sell because no, comedy we're, clubs. We're the only product. It's just like comedy, the NBA. Comedy club, the comics comedy are the only product. Make, yeah, comedy clubs make the most revenue on urban acts. Period. I, okay, I, I can I go with that. Yeah, because uh, we have a perfect example. The reason why D. Ray is rich, is famous now and rich is because he ran the the, the Sunday night comedy, uh, Chocolate Sunday at Riddles, and yep. that shit was selling out three shows at twenty five dollars a person, three hundred mm -hmm. seats. The rest of their weeks was empty at this place. They folded right. after he left. The dude got right. greedy tried to take the the night from him and just book it himself. He tried to take the Sunday night. Well, he didn't realize D-Ray's following was D-Ray's following. Right. People was like, what's up with Sunday nights where D-Ray at? They wasn't saying, let's go to Riddles. So when he left or moved, they went with him. Right. You know, and so the place folded, man. It ended up folding, but they kept it coming back because, you know, secretly, they they uh <laughs> it's Chicago, so they got a um it's like a biker gang that own it, or uh, you know, one of them groups. So they sell a heroin or some shit out back anyway, you know what I'm saying? So they opened it back up and not actually Damon was using it. Damon was actually building it building it back, doing kind of the same thing D Ray did. They figured it out. Let him right. have his door and they'll take the drinks and they'll survive. Right. But in the essence of what we're talking about, man, it's the artist who's smart enough to control his art that makes the money now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's yeah. it, man. But um, on that, man, I'm going to wrap this thing up. And I, again, man, I appreciate being able to parlay with you, man. We're going to try to, we're going to find a way to get, get on the show together. I swear yeah, to God, man. it's It'll a bucket happen. lister. It'll, it'll happen, man. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But, you know, we uh, do it, I, I believe it's probably going to happen through the uh, through the fraternity first. Oh, for and then, sure. And then for we'll, sure. it'll come out after that. You know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely, man. And uh, I'll be I hit you up out, outside of this, bro. Take care. Okay. All Thank right, you, man. man. Thank you, All bro. Right. Yo. Peace.